everyone, and welcome to the third session of AACC's Let's Talk Health Science series. My name is Carmen, I'm an education counsellor here at AACC, and I will be your host for this session. Maybe we'll allow a few more seconds for more participants to join us. Um, meanwhile, I'd like to let you know that AACC is a student placement agency, and we assist students through their overseas university application process. So if you're keen on applying after today's session, please let us know and we'll be happy to help. Also, our services are free. So um, today we have Ms. Ananti, Regional Manager International of Student Recruitment and Admissions at Monash University, who will be talking to us about their pharmacy program, as well as Dr. Gurian Ang, Associate Lecturer at the Faculty of Science, and Mr. Bernard Kong, Country Manager of Recruitment in Singapore, both from the University of Queensland, who will be telling us more about their vet science program. I'll be asking Ananti and Dr. Ang some questions about the two programs, which all of you will want to hear about and then we'll get your questions answered too. So please go ahead and ask your questions in the Q&A box throughout the session. So if um, you're asking a specific uh, question to a specific university, uh, please specify which university you're asking to. And um, you can also ask anonymously if you're shy. Okay, uh, we'll also be putting up a poll, so we'll appreciate if you could let us know through the poll which of these two programs you're interested in. Okay, so with that, um, maybe let me start the session. Um, maybe I can start with asking Ananti. Can you give us an introduction of yourself and the pharmacy program at Monash, please? Um, thanks, Carmen, for the introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Ananti, as uh, she has mentioned, and I'm from the International Student Recruitment and Admissions. Having worked with Monash for 10 years, uh, for today, I'll be representing uh, my faculty, uh, which is the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Science. Um, as we all know, every pharmacy um, degree in Australia offers a five-year pathway uh, to register as a pharmacist. Our pathway takes the same amount of time to start and finish, but instead of um, graduating with one degree, a student will actually uh, graduate with two, which is a master's program as well as a bachelor with honours. In other words, a uh, student will have an advantage uh, over every other pharmacy graduate in the country, uh, as it one of, uh, for Monash is one of a kind in Australia. Um, and the good news is in the fifth year of the course entails an internship. So it's just not a degree, a valuable work experience that the student will get, but they will also get paid for it. But also, uh, if students do not want to progress with the master's program, they can always exit with the uh, four-year Bachelor of Pharmacy honors. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Ananti. So over to Dr. Ang, would you tell us about yourself and the vet science program at UQ, please? Uh, thanks, Carmen, and to all of our friends in Singapore and Malaysia, uh, good evening to you all. Uh, in case you were interested, both uh, Ananti and I are on this eastern seaboard of Australia, and we're two hours ahead of you all. Uh, it's 10 p.m. here tonight, and I think it, I understand from Ananti we're getting to enjoy the full moon a little bit better, uh, or maybe slightly ahead of time for, for, for before it reaches you all. Um, mm -hmm. So, so... So um, I, 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 I'm, I'm Gurian, and, and here in Australia, we are all largely on a first name basis. So please feel free to call me uh, Gurian, although some of the students here call me Dr. G. Uh, I am originally from Singapore, and now I, I, I teach here at the university. I teach ecology and zoology, so the study of animals, and of course, then the abundance and distribution of those animals um, in nature. Um, today, we will, uh, on behalf of UQ, we'll focus on our five-year um, a, a Bachelor of Veterinary Science Honours Program. This is an undergraduate program that's accredited uh, both by the, uh, well, by the Australian, by the US and by the, the UK veterinary boards, um, largely meaning to say that with a, with a degree like the Bachelor of Vet Science, um, you, you, you pretty much can practice virtually anywhere uh, in the world. So really, really quite excited to be talking to you all about this program. And I think it's really, really timely in this day and age. I know most of you are still very, very young, but if you're anything like me, you will um, uh, probably have considered very seriously that you are probably not going to have children. 
Uh, and the reason for that is because um, pets offer a, a much more uh, interesting and, and, and more rewarding relationship, some people think. I myself do not have kids. Uh, I have three dogs here. And every time I come home, they're so excited to be waiting for me at the door, waiting for me to come home. I don't think, I don't think your children will ever be so excited to be waiting for you when you get home. Um, but in, I, I guess jokes aside, uh, we, are, we are seeing um, uh, a significant increase in, um, uh, I guess, the interest in, in pet keeping. Um, and here in Australia, it's not exclusive to your cute and cuddly dogs and animals. Um, you get to work with exotic species, larger domesticated species. And of course, as you might be familiar, Australia home to a variety of wildlife. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So now before we move on to more details about the program, um, can I just get some clarification for students who are here because of their interest in working with animals? What's the difference between vet science and animal science? And how do I decide which one to study? Yeah, that's a good question. So animal science is not, uh, in terms of the name explicitly, that's not something we have at the undergraduate level. So I think the thing that is worth being clear about here is that the, uh, the vet science program at UQ is very unique compared to a lot of other universities in that it is an undergraduate program. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with the term, that what that means is that immediately upon completing your studies, you know, from Singapore, whether you finish your A-levels, you finish your, 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 your polytechnic diploma, uh, in Malaysia, you finish your IB or your A-levels if you're in an international school or the, or the mainstream, um, uh, uh, I guess, Malaysian national exams, you can start um, the vet science program, of course, depending on how well you've done at school, um, but, but uh, you, you can start the vet science program typically at the undergraduate level, okay? So that's one thing that's really important and, and, I'm, and I apologize if I didn't make that clear earlier on. Uh, animal science though is not something we offer explicitly in the, at the undergraduate level, but there are many shapes and forms in which you can you know, pursue your interest in studying about animals. And they include things like our Bachelor of Wildlife Science and or our Bachelor of Science and then choosing to major in something like zoology. So I guess you need to think about what aspect of working with animals you might like to, to be a part of. If you are interested in considering things like um, uh, animal health, or maybe going into a little bit of research that will specifically treat ailments and diseases associated with animal health, whether that is your, your cute and cuddly domesticated household pets or larger livestock animals, right from poultry all the way to um, um, you know, your, your, your cows and horses or even wild animals, then maybe vet science is for you. If, however, you're more interested in things like the animal biology, animal husbandry, uh, ethics, uh, animal welfare, uh, animal physiology, uh, behavior, um, then you probably want to think of a career where you might be either looking at um, uh, research, so looking at how we can study and better understand these animals, um, or even in fact working in, um, in many you know, national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, uh, zoos, um, so on and so forth. And, and if you're looking for that sort of career, then maybe something like wildlife science or zoology is more suitable for you. So that really is the distinction. See, that clears up the confusion. So speaking of similar causes, there is also a course that seems very similar to pharmacy, and that is pharmaceutical science. So Ananti, can you give us some insights into the difference between these two programs, please? Yeah, thanks, Carmen. It's, it's pretty unusual because for Monash University, we have 200 over degrees. We have 10 faculties. The only courses that we don't have is actually vet science and animal, you know. So it's really great to hear from Dr. G regarding the differences, uh, which makes more sense to me now. And obviously, um, uh, Malaysia and Singapore being a very mature market, uh, there's always a frequently asked question when I'm uh, counseling parents, students, or even career counselors at school. What's the difference between pharmacy and pharmaceutical science? Um, hence, you know, basically, uh, if you want to have uh, the recognition and accreditation is required for this uh, professional course to become a pharmacy so that you are able to actually, you know, dispense or advise on drugs over the counter. So pharmacy aside, it's just the pharmaceutical science, uh, which is pretty interesting because at the unprecedented COVID situation now, I guess uh, we are getting a lot more inquiries on uh, pharmaceutical science. 
Um, therefore, as uh, Australia's uh, leading faculty of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences, uh, I would say we are actually at the front, um, the forefront of both uh, research and education in our field. The students are very much curious and prefer to work in a lab. Uh, probably pharmaceutical science might be more suitable for them because uh, it's purely uh, a lot more research undertaken um, by leading uh, pharmaceutical scientists, uh, which will be having an impact on health around the globe. Uh, like I said, one of our success uh, include a joint design and development of an influenza uh, treatment relenza. It's a collaborative design of a potential uh, single dose malaria treatment and how these new approaches uh, to delivering drugs uh, to the body uh, more effectively. So uh, our challenging undergraduate, uh, postgraduate and research within the pharmaceutical uh, sciences course will prepare students uh, for frontline roles in modern uh, patient care uh, and drug discovery and development. So uh, rest assured that uh, pharmaceutical scientists are highly employable locally and also internationally. You will definitely find them in hospital communities, um, research centers and drug companies around the world. So it's just not pharmacies, but currently pharmaceutical scientists are also highly regarded at the moment. Yeah, thank you. Right, so pharmaceutical science is more of research on discovering and developing drugs, while pharmacy is more clinical in nature, focusing on working with patients to dispense the medication. Yes, that's correct. Yep. So uh, before I continue, just a reminder for everyone to participate in the poll to let us know which program you are interested in, please. Okay, so moving on. Um, now that we know a bit about the programs, the next important question for Ananti would be, why should students choose to study pharmacy at Monash? What facilities and support are there for them? Mm, that's a very good question, Carmen. Um, our pharmacy course has been long considered uh, as the leading pharmacy program in Australia. So students will become an expert on how medicine interacts with the body to play a vital role in improving public health. Um, therefore, I think I think uh, in terms of the support that we get, uh, our student will gain is we have a very good uh, learning environment and technology in which uh, the faculty is committed to providing a world-class learning environment and technologies for students and staff. Um, they have just recently invested about um, 75 million to redevelop the uh, teaching laboratories and build practice environment for students uh, to develop skills in pharmacy practice and also in the pharmaceutical sciences. There's another thing that the faculty have uh, emphasized a lot more in terms of the facilities in which we call sharing and collaborating. The faculty is strongly committed uh, to internal and external uh, collaborations, as we know. Um, evidence of their belief and the value of the partnership uh, includes uh, we have this very unique development, which is called uh, Pharmatopia, uh, which is currently extends uh, to 12 leading international uh, pharmacy school and a collaborative program uh, with uh, some of the um, pharmaceutical uh, companies for skills uh, development and training. Uh, we also uh, been hosting a pharmacy education symposium. This is pretty interesting because um, it's actually uh, kind of like originated from Prato, which create opportunities uh, for pharmacy educators uh, to explore teaching and learning uh, in terms of the development of SABER. SABER actually stands for uh, sharing and uh, building educational resources which is an uh, open global resources uh, services for pharmacy and uh, around the globe contributing to also National Alliance of Pharmacy Education, which provides internship uh, and postgraduate education. So I guess uh, with all this uh, investment in terms of uh, learning environment and technologies, uh, there'll be lots of support for students when they're actually pursuing the course. Thank you. Thank you, Anati. It sounds amazing to study pharmacy at Monash. 
I'm sure Gurian will also have some information to share about why students should choose UQ for vet science and also the facilities and support that students can expect. Over to you, Gurian. Yeah, thanks very much for that. So you need to walk away um, from this with, with, with four key points about, about our vet science program. And at the same time, I'll simultaneously answer one of the questions that's in the, in, in the Q&A. One, as I already mentioned, this is a direct entry at the undergraduate level, okay? In other words, you can immediately enter uh, in your first year at university in a vet science program, which also answers one of the questions that have come from you. Thank you very much for the question. And whether there's a difference between vet science and vet medicine. Well, the difference is in the name. Uh, so, so the vet medicine and vet science will both ultimately lead you down the same career path. Uh, of course, at UQ, you start that immediately at the undergraduate level and for five years. In other words, in other universities where you typically have a doctor of vet medicine, you would typically finish an undergraduate degree in say animal science or animal physiology, and then go on and continue a doctor of vet medicine, which will take you a much longer time than our five-year program. Okay, so one thing is it's undergraduate five years. Second thing, Triple accreditation. As I mentioned, the Australian board, the UK board, and the US board recognize this program. Uh, there is no other undergraduate vet science program that's triple accredited from Australia. The Australian board allows you to practice in Australia and New Zealand. The UK board allows you to pra practice in mo most parts of Europe and back in Singapore and Malaysia is, is where you need the UK accreditation. And the US, of course, allows you to practice in the US and Canada. So that's the second thing. The third thing is, of course, your, you know, I guess we're constantly thinking about, oh, what about, you know, industry relevance, you know, and work integrated learning. Uh, that starts from your first year in the vet science program. So already in the first year of your vet science program, you have, you have, you have approximately, you know, about a couple hundred hours of, of, of work integrated sort of, 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 of learning right through to your fourth year where you again have, have, have clinical placements or, or, and do, you know, you, your you, you do your clinical code ceremony in, 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 in your fourth year and then you, you, you start learning about surgery um, uh, in an animal specific way. And then right down to your fifth year, which is your full time six, um, not 600, um, 1300 hours plus of placement throughout your fifth year. Okay, so it's it's very industry relevant. And of course, we also have access to an actual clinic on campus, right? So you'll be learning about um, uh, uh, about practice. And, and I guess in many ways, you learn quite, quite, quite a bit on the job. Um, uh, and, and there's also access to those sort of small, small animal clinics on campus. And then on the more, I guess, more thoughtful mess, you know, th on a more thoughtful note, the fourth thing is, of course, um, you know, you know, you might be considering vet science because you have a pet dog or a pet cat, okay, or a pet hamster or terrapin, and you maybe are considering that, oh, maybe in the future I might like to work in, 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 you know, in the health of, of those particular animals, but remember that that's just one subgroup of lots and lots of different animals. And we're really, really fortunate to be in a really biodiverse place like Queensland to give you all the exposure of lots and lots of different animals in the same spot. And they of course include domesticated animals, of course, all of your dogs and your cats, not forgetting your livestock animals, just as important for everything from your poultry right up, like I said, to your sheep, your goats, your cows, your horses. And of course, many of you maybe the very, very popular domesticated animal now, alpacas, right? You know what an alpaca is. Uh, and then of course, finally, your exotic and wild animals. And, in, and you know, here in Australia, lots of marsupials and, you know, our kangaroos and koalas, our wombats. Um, and, and, and so our vet science students um, uh, do all of them, right? So, so by hook or by crook, you need to get through all the physiology and, and, and understanding of the anatomy and biology of all of them. That is just uh, something for you to, 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 to have so that you can go out into you know, your future career ready to take on virtually anything that comes in through the clinic. And not every vet science program offers you that. So those are the four things, okay? Direct undergraduate, triple accreditation, lots of work, work integrated learning and work placement, and then a diversity of animals that you'll have experience in. Thank you, Gurian. UQ is indeed popular for their undergraduate vet science program. So moving 
straightforward. I think students would be interested to know how the course structure is like. So maybe going back to Ananti again, will you please let us know what and how they will be learning in this program, please? Thanks for the question. Uh, just wanted before I respond to that, you know, alpacas is actually my favorite thing at the moment because my friend actually has a farm in the regional, um, you know, with the truffle farm. It's something that, you know, very um, amazing animals, I would say, <laughs> pretty adventurous as well. So that kind of like, you know, brought to my thought is really a in thing at the moment, at the moment uh, with my fellow friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, as what uh, Carmen has mentioned about the cost structure, um, with the pharmacy course, the, stru uh, the structure of the course develops through six teams. Um, the first three being um, structure and functions of the body, the drug stru uh, structure, uh, deposition and, and action. And uh, lastly is the professional practice, which comes together in the final three uh, teams later on in terms of comprehensive care, uh, which will um, develop a lot more inquiries and innovation and professional uh, experience respectively. One of the uh, good thing about this course is uh, it will definitely develop uh, the relevant practical and analytical skills that students require for pharmacy practice, um, as well as uh, it will also help students uh, in terms of their generic skills, uh, such as oral and written uh, communication. Uh, it's just not bad, but we also need the student to uh, be a critical thinker, uh, need to inquire, learning for life, uh, as well as information literacy and leadership. So all this has been combined together within the course. So hopefully, you know, that will be really helpful in terms of student uh, mapping up the course and progressing, uh, progressing uh, respectively over the years. Thanks, Carmen. I see. So you mentioned briefly earlier that there will be internships as well. So when will these be and how many hours will it be? Where will they do these internships? Uh, basically, in terms of the uh, clinical placement, uh, it will be done towards the end of the year, which is uh, basically it's embedded uh, practical experience uh, in which a student will, which will include about 12 weeks in a variety of clinical settings to develop and also to give context to their skill development. So uh, once the student enter the stage two, they will uh, undertake the um, Pharmacy Board of Australia, which requires a pre-registration uh, year, which is including the uh, National Alliance for Pharmacy Education, uh, intern training program, which, which is commonly known as uh, ITP, which is accredited by the Australian Pharmacy Council. There's a lot of big names over here. <laughs> Um, obviously, uh, within uh, the practical which is done uh, in the final year, students will definitely be able to develop their skills in the workplace, uh, focusing on the competencies required to practice as a registered pharmacy. Um, they will also need to complete the Monash uh, University Pharmacy Intern uh, Foundation Program, which is known as IFP that recognizes additional professional knowledge uh, and skill gained uh, while working as in a Monash credential training site. So basically, uh, in order to enroll for this program, uh, the, the intern training program, as well as the intern foundation program, uh, student will need to undertake their internship under the supervi uh, supervision of the uh, of a pharmacist approved by the Pharmacy Board of uh, Australia. So hope that explains uh, the practical component about, uh, you know, in the pharmacy program. Thanks, Carmen. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you, Anandi. How about UQ's vet science program? What will the course cover over the five years in terms of course content? Thanks. So the five years is broken down you know, I'll, I'll do this quite generically, but if I can draw everyone's attention to the chat where I've just posted a link to our study planner and you'll find that if you're not just looking at vet science, you can find a whole suite of other uh, science programs with a study planner. And the benefit of going through a study planner is to actually systematically look at which courses you'll take over the time. But for interest and for the parents watching in the background, uh, for the vet science program, year one, 
we are looking at your basic anatomy and physiology. Unfortunately, you can't get away with basic biology and of course your biochemistry. I'm sorry, you cannot get away from that. Okay, so that's year one. Then second year, we move on to your nutrition and disease. Third year, we continue on disease and toxicology. We do a little bit of genetics then. And then in your fourth year is where you start thinking about, about um, uh, uh, you know, where to from here and you start your, your sort of surgery practice. Then finally, your fifth year is your placement year. So that gives you a quick snapshot of the five years of the vet science program. Uh, as with many other uh, universities in Australia, you're looking at typically two semesters per year. Uh, and each semester runs for approximately 13 weeks. We have our semester one that runs sometime from, uh, um, um, uh, you know, big, end of February, beginning of March, right through to, to the end of June, you have a nice winter break. So we're in the Southern hemisphere, so the seasons are swapped. You have a nice winter break across July. Uh, then you begin again at the end of July, semester two, and you finish um, your exams in semester two by November. So that's your typical structure across the five years studying full-time with us. Thank you. I see you also mentioned about placements already earlier. So I just want to add on to that regarding the placement. So uh, will students be able to do these placements in other states or maybe other countries as well? Uh, no, the placements don't don't typically happen interstate. Although I must say, I must say that that Queensland shares a border with New, New South Wales, and getting from I guess getting from 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 the main city of Brisbane right down to the northern northern part of New South Wales is not very very far, and it's not you know at most two hours uh, two hour drive. Uh, we 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 do have students. Um, as part of their placements, uh, uh, you know, going to many different parts. Um, I, I promise you, Australia is a very, very big place. Queensland is is also a very, very big place. Um, so we have our students dispatched here, then everywhere in in, in um, all, all parts of Queensland and also northern New South Wales. Now, uh, saying that, I do need to add a, a disclaimer because because all of you are international students um, thinking about coming to join us for study, that what you will find is when, when it comes to these placements, there is the expectation that you, in the same way you would, you know, in the future work for an employer, uh, there is expectation that you would cover uh, typically the travel uh, costs um, uh, associated with moving from placement to placement. Um, so that's a question we get quite frequently. Um, uh, so you, you need to, to be aware of that. Uh, so it, it is to your advantage if you do have a driver's license and, and have the means to, to get from place to place. But please don't stress if that, that shouldn't be a limitation if you don't drive. Um, uh, that's something you can work with the, the placement officer to, to figure out and, and you know, find something that, that will work for you, okay? So the thing is, if you don't drive, you just make friends who drive, right? Yeah. That is a good way of doing it. And I don't drive <laughs> until today. I shouldn't be on the road because it's very <laughs> a danger to others. So, and I am, I'm totally 100% with you, Carmen. Why drive when others can drive you? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe let's go on to something a bit more serious. So let's talk about COVID-19. So COVID-19 has dramatically affected the world in the past one and a half years. So how has this pandemic affected studies for this program, especially since students in these, both of these programs have to complete the required placements? Maybe we can start with Kuyen. Yeah, so thanks thanks for that. Yeah, so you, you're absolutely right uh, in that um, uh, uh, th there's the placement side of things that has to be in person. We'll talk about that shortly. Then, of course, there's the academic side. So for most of our our uh, um, uh, participants today, I guess the, the, the good thing is that the earliest you can join us, the earliest you can join us as an enrolled student in the vet science program is, is, is the start of 2022. This is a single intake program. We only take students in at semester one, and we only take about... A, on average, only about 40 students come into the vet science program as international students. Now, um, with that, right, you know, your first year, your second year, your third year, then your fourth year when you properly start placement uh, will be in when? 20, uh, 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 25. Okay, now, if, if borders, I promise you, will be open by then. Okay, so that's one thing you, you, you know, our participants tonight don't have to really worry about, but you might be worried about your day-to-day classes and lectures, because in your first two years, at least, it's still very lecture and tutorial and practical orientated. 
um, you will find that uh, we have the means and capacities to be delivering a lot of this material online and that's what we've been doing since this time last year uh, and um, and I think you will find that the feedback in um, from specifically our our vet science students to studying online has been incredibly uh, positive. Um, so very shortly, I'll, I'll just share with you another link in the chat. Um, and that's a nice little news story specifically from our vet science cohort that shows how we have digitally transformed vet science, including students watching uh, surgeries on animals take place um, live. Um, and they can ask questions and, and actually um, learn more. Uh, and, 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 and I think I want to preface this and also, you know, um, on behalf of my, 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 my colleague at Monash, um, we're all in this together. You know, all of our academics and all of our support staff are in this together. We are doing our very best, but as universities, we really only can go with what the Australian government allows us to go with. And at this stage, mm -hmm. we unfortunately borders are still closed. And we're all, all, all doing it together. And I guess the advice I wanna give everybody when you're considering your next step is make an informed decision and be very, very clear about prospects over at least the next year, year or so. Um, and, and hopefully that helps in, in making your decision. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So how about the pharmacy program, Anandi? How has COVID-19 affected studies for your program? Um, I must admit the uh, COVID-19 definitely have uh, affected the placement for the students. Uh, obviously now we do have students onshore in Australia as well as offshore doing it online. But the um, pharmacy course, I guess the most crucial uh, year will be the third year, whereby uh, there will be an exper uh, experimental placement, which is unfortunately conducted on site in Melbourne. So uh, this um, placement uh, include a substantial amount of uh, on-job training. Uh, therefore, they actually designed to give a student enough authentic pr uh, practice uh, experience so that uh, they are able to safely care for patients. So they are actually often uh, part of the pharmacy course that student um, would actually rate uh, most highly. So likewise, you know, it's just not pharmacy, but in health profession education programs, uh, you know, these experimental uh, placement are not the university's requirement. They are uh, they're actually uh, also a requirement for registration as a pharmacist in Australia. So this means that the faculty doesn't have much flexibility to work around the completion of these placement activities. Uh, particularly in the year three and four of the course, if you're doing the Bachelor of Pharmacy with Honours, and obviously the, uh, if the student wants to pursue on with the Masters of Pharmacy. So uh, unfortunately, if students are not uh, able to be in Melbourne, so they are not able to complete their, exper uh, their placement, and not completing this uh, placement uh, will definitely impact on their progression in either future years of the course registration as an intern uh, pharmacist. So uh, the thing is the faculty has actually have dedicated a web page, uh, which are handling the students on a course by ca uh, case by case basis in terms of uh, to plan out um, the possible uh, uh, placement, which is uh, required accordingly you know it's either they push it back uh, later in the year or you know try to get an intermission and uh, also we have also need to consider that uh, you know if students are undergoing certain symptoms like cough fever or you know some of could it's not a covid symptom but if they are that means they are not able to actually move on with their placement at the hospital as well so things like that are definitely have impacted them, but rest assured the faculty is really working very hard with the students to, to make those arrangements in place so that eventually they will not have any issues in terms of uh, with their registration with the pharmacy board. Thank you, Anansi. Let's hope borders will open soon so we'll be able to resume our campus study and placement. Yeah, that's true. But it's been quite a good experience, though. Uh, most of our students, uh, you know, obviously for pharmacy, we only have one intake per year. But uh, students actually have been doing it online, offshore. Uh, this is, will be their second year in running. And I do understand they could actually get a, uh, apply for travel exemption if they would like to, you know, some of the health 
courses have been given exemption for them to travel. So uh, I guess the most crucial uh, one would be the third year student for the pharmacy. Yeah. Yep. So now we know the what and the why. I'm sure all of you are eager to find out how you can get a place in these programs. So exact entry requirements, of course, depends on which qualification the students hold. But Anandi, are there any additional admissions tests, uh, specific prerequisite or recommended subjects that students should have in order to qualify for the pharmacy program? Okay, it's very simple. In order to get a, uh, you know, to actually uh, get a full offer for the program, student will need to meet two requirements. Uh, one is the entry requirement, obviously achieving. Uh, you know, we do recognize uh, A-level, ATAR, uh, which is the Australian matriculation, IB, we have, uh, you know, UEC, uh, and even the po Singapore Poly, we do have, uh, do, we do recognize all those qualifications. But on top of that, students will also need to meet the subject prereq, which is English, Mathematics, and Chemistry. That's it. <laughs> So what can the student do if he or she doesn't have these prerequisite subjects? Um, so basically, there are two options for the student. Option number one is uh, obviously, you know, if they don't meet the requirement and doesn't have the subject prereq, they could actually probably attempt their year 12. We do, uh, for Monash University, we do offer our own foundation. We call it MAFI. MAFI actually stands for Monash University Foundation Year. Uh, which is a one-year program, and we can actually package the foundation with the, uh, with the degree. It's a guaranteed entry as long as students meet the requirement. Or student um, is, a, is actually eligible for our graduate entry program. So if a student have completed uh, uh, a degree in sciences, such as like Bachelor of Biomedical Science, uh, Bachelor of Biomedicine, Pharmaceutical Science, or even a, uh, a basic Bachelor of Science. So as long as they meet a minimum uh, completion of their undergraduate with 70%, they are actually able to get into our third year of the pharmacy program. Um, basically, uh, what happened is once they move into the third year of the program, they only have remaining two years in order to complete and uh, and they are able to actually sit for the pharmacy board of examination to become a practicing pharmacist. So in summary, there are two pathways. Either they want to attend their year 12 again, or probably they would like to progress on with uh, those degrees that I've mentioned, which they met the requirement and re-attempt into our graduate entry uh, pharmacy program. I see. So is there also a, a quota for this program? Good news, we don't have. <laughs> so <laughs> as long as we can take as many students as possible, as long as they meet the requirement. So I guess uh, we have dedicated one campus uh, purely for the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Science at our, it's actually at our uh, Parkville campus. So, uh, so that's the good news that I have for this program. This is the only program we actually don't have a limitation of places for international students. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's great, Anandi. I hope this has been clear for students who are keen on pharmacy. So not forgetting the aspiring vets. Um, Gulian, can you please enlighten us on whether there are any prerequisite or additional tests for entry into the vet science program, please? Thank you. So uh, I, I, unlike the pharmacy program, <laughs> Uh, for our international students, we do have a quota. We are hesitant to specify an exact number, but typically it's around 40 students. Uh, we do keep a, a, a ratio of domestic students, so the, the students, the Australian and New Zealand citizens, um, to our international students at about two is to one. So they, they form a, a larger collective cohort of about 120 students per cohort. Um, this is very, very deliberate because, you know, as a university, we are responsible for making sure that there are 
are not only enough placements, but then uh, the, the the number of, of vets that we graduate also is 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 proportional to the industry's demand for them. Okay. Uh, in terms of prerequisite, um, I encourage you again now to um, draw your attention to the the chat, and I've just given you a link there to our future students website specifically for the vet science honors program. Uh, please check that you have changed the setting to an international student, and then there is a tab there that says specifically entry requirements. So similarly. You've got your English, but in terms of subject prerequisites, um, we expect mathematics, a chemistry, and then on top of that, you need to, in addition to the chemistry, the chemistry is compulsory, but then you, you can, you'll need a, a, a second science and that can be in physics or biology. There, are, there is a score cut off and we accept similar to the Monash program, a variety of, of, of ways that you can get into into um, uh, UQ, um, whether that's your A-levels, your IB, or, or, or so on and so forth. Now, in addition to that, for, for, for vet science in particular, I think you need to start appreciating that as nice as it sounds, medicine, whether with animals or with humans, is not for everyone. Okay, and while you might think you lack, while you might think you have the right aptitude and, and your heart and your mind might be in the right place, um, you may find yourself after you start, no, this is not for me. You know, I see, I cut open an animal and not, that's not for me, right? So, so, so that's one aspect to it. And there's a lot of mental resilience that we expect in our, in our vet science students. As a result of which we are making it mandatory for all of our future students to also accompany the application with an aptitude test. This is not a test that you can study for. It is for us to assess your mental and your emotional intelligence. Okay, so like I said, it's not something you can uh, prepare for. There's no, you know, it's not like an SAT or a game set that you can you can buy textbooks and prepare for. Uh, it gives you certain situations, and we are evaluating your response to those situations to figure out whether or not you're suitable for our program. So you don't actually get the results of your test. The test, uh, the results, uh, the results are confidential and sent directly to us for our own evaluation. And um, Bernard, uh, who is our, uh, our Singapore representative, um, has included that also in the link to, for you to figure, to learn more about what we call the situational judgment test. That's the aptitude test. And this is provided by um, a service provider known as Casper. And within the website, for those of you genuinely interested, within the Casper website, you'll find out when the next test dates are. And you'll also have some sample sort of questions that you might encounter in this test. And similarly, uh, if the question is, oh my God, the, the, the entry requirements are so high, I don't have it now, what can I do? Um, don't stress, there's always, uh, it's, it's about the destination, not, I mean, in addition to the, in addition to the destination, the journey is also just as important, right? So there are multiple ways to get to where you want to be. And again, in the um, chat, I've put your pathway options that can be a variety of them. Um, and the most popular one, I will say, for our vet science students that want to come into vet science but didn't actually qualify at first for vet science, that is to actually find their way into a program like the Bachelor of Vet Tech or a Bachelor of Science and do about a year in that program, do exceedingly well and then apply uh, into the vet science program. Unfortunately, you can't take any credit with you. Um, the, that's just the way the program is structured. You, you, you will simply need to do the five years in the vet science, however long it took you prior to that. Okay, um, so, so, so that's um, uh, uh, um, some of the pathway available for you. We also have a foundation studies provider, but it's not as fancy as Monash. You have a nice little name. Uh, ours is just called UQ College. Okay, so that's our foundation <laughs> uh, studies provider. Thanks. Yeah, so thank you. It's nice to hear that, you know, it's not the end if you don't qualify for direct entry. So um, we've heard from both Anandi and Gunan that it's not easy to get into these two programs, but both of them are surely meaningful professions. So what's next after graduating? Maybe Anandi, can you tell us more about accreditation for the pharmacy program and how graduates can register to practice as a pharmacist please? Um, so basically, our pharmacy program is recognized by the uh, 
of uh, Australian Pharmacy Board as well as Malaysia Pharmacy Board and Singapore Pharmacy Board. As long as student graduate the Bachelor of Pharmacy with honors, uh, that's being recognized. So once they are done, obviously they have to do the uh, intern and then practice as a pharmacist. The most important uh, in, uh, thing is the recognition of the degree. So that's very important. And uh, as you know of uh, for Monash University, those who actually have some financial constraint, uh, they can actually consider our Monash Malaysia campus in Subang Jaya. We do offer the, uh, the Bachelor of Pharmacy program at that particular campus. So students have the option to actually uh, study either the four years in, at our campus, or they can actually opt to do two years in Monash, Malaysia and transfer to our Parkview campus in Melbourne for two years. So either way, all these uh, program, uh, like I mentioned, the accreditation is more important, which is recognized by, uh, for the Monash, Malaysia, it's recognized by the uh, Australia and the Malaysia Pharmacy Board, but not the Singapore Pharmacy Board. So just take note of that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ananti. So similar to pharmacy, vet science also requires accreditation to practice in Australia and elsewhere in the world. So Gurian, can you please share with us um, more about this, including how students can register to practice as a vet? Yeah, so typically if you're going to register to practice as a vet, whether in Australia or beyond, uh, there are ways in which that you, you, you will need to register yourself uh, as an accredited vet in, in whichever country you are. And, and, and similar in a way to the pharmacy program at Monash, it's, 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 it is again all about the recognition and accreditation that comes with this, this, this degree. Uh, and as previously mentioned, um, being a triple accredited degree pretty much allows you to practice anywhere in the world. In terms of your career prospects, it is, of, it is of course a program designed specifically so you can become a vet. In other words, practice vet medicine and, mm -hmm. and in most cases perform you know, very mainstream surgery, including desexing animals and, 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 and basic other forms of, 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 of surgery, not necessarily the specialist type of surgery. Uh, for that, typically you will need additional training beyond your time. Um, and, and in terms of your career, for those of you who are thinking how you go about doing that, well, there are a few ways that vets become vets, right? You can, of course, find your way into working for a much larger vet clinic or vet hospital. Uh, it's very, very popular, especially here in Australia, to start your own vet practice, a private business, or of course, you buy a franchise. Um, you buy a franchise, a well-known, well-branded chain of, of, of vet clinics, and, and you are the franchise owner, but you're also the vet that practices in that clinic. Okay, so, so those are the, the avenues. Now, on top of that, I do want to say something. We, we see that definitely in a lot of our vets. So, so those, are, those are, of course, the vets that choose to continue in domesticated animals, so your, your, your pets, largely dogs and cats. Then again, don't forget that vets also need to take care of the much larger animals, some kept in our zoos, in our sanctuaries, our livestock animals. Um, and, and so vets also find their way into those sorts of industries. But then more importantly, going into the future and a lot of, and, and I guess that's why our, our, our vet students are quite well placed. A lot of the academics that teach into our vet science program are of course themselves vets and in some cases practicing vets, but we also have a lot of epidemiologists in our, amongst our, our vet academic community. So if you think of COVID-19, you have all of the doctor, you know, the doctors who are epidemiologists that can predict spread and offer advice on biosecurity and quarantine and, 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 and decisions made about how we manage COVID-19. Um, in the same way, vets do the same for zoonotic disease. I mean, COVID-19 is, is, is very lightly going, is very lightly a zoonotic disease, right? So in other words, a, a disease that, that affects human but transmitted by an animal. And, and, and a lot of the, the upcoming pandemics, I promise you COVID-19 will not be the last. Um, we will see transmitted from, from animals, largely because we're just, we're just more and more people in, in the world and more and more animals that we've produced. So, um, so, so, so we do see a lot of our vets finding themselves in those careers as well, uh, where they're more research focused, more analytical rather than, than vet practice, but you need a background in vet you know, in vet practice to be to, to actually reach there. Okay, so um, whether you're whether you're becoming a, a diagnostic pathologist, so you know somebody, you know suddenly there's an outbreak of something, and you're the vet that's been asked to diagnose what the disease is. Some of our vets do that, uh, or if um, 
you consulted on what's the best way to manage, you know, this virus X being transmitted from this animal Y. Okay, um, our vets also find themselves in those sorts of careers. That sounds really interesting. So on the topic of careers, would you be able to share with us the expected starting salary of a vet? Uh, I can do that, but I'll be hesitant to do that for <laughs> anyone outside of Australia. Okay, so of course this is, I mean, and, and largely that's that's on me because I, I don't actually know and, and I maybe don't know where to find that information. But what I can tell you, Sorry, let me unmute myself. And mm -hmm. I just to refer to my notes because I want to get the figures right. Um, <laughs> that is uh, that is what I can tell you is that we we we're very fortunate in Australia where we we have a lot of of data that's freely available. Uh, and what we do know is that the 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 entry level sort of salary for a vet practicing in in Australia uh, is um, uh, uh, typically about one thousand three hundred and eighty four Australian dollars per week. Um, and that that amounts to about about um, just over seventy one thousand per year. Now that is of course an entry level vet, which is quite a decent salary. And like all jobs, okay. And and I'll, I'll do a big service to all of the parents standing behind you all now. <laughs> like all like all jobs, please don't expect to graduate today and get a high paying job tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. OK, uh, everybody does their time. Don't don't come. And this is my academic hat speaking. Don't come to university to find to, to get that high paying job at the end of it. Right. You, you come to university because you are interested in the philosophy of learning. And while we train you to become a vet, we also train you to be a critical thinker, a creative thinker and a problem solver. And those are the skills that you're going to take wherever you go in the future. So, so, so I know I've deviated slightly, but I guess what I want to say is that you will find yourself, right? Um, you know, uh, uh, your, your, your job hunting and, and sometimes you just need to just start somewhere, right? You just need to start somewhere. We're fortunate, especially in a place like Australia where starting salaries relative to the rest of the world are quite high and it only goes up from there. Okay, so so mm -hmm. think about it that way. So starting salary about seventy one thousand per year, but then of course as you progress on in your career and eventually become more and more independent and more and more specialized as a vet, you find yourself probably earning uh, more and more after that. Thank you so much. Yeah. So how about for pharmacies, uh, please, Anandi? What's the average? I mean, the the starting salary for pharmacists. I think this question is namely for the finance minister at home. Mom and dad would like to know what's the return of investment that they have done. Um, yeah, so the average pharmacy salary in Australia, I do agree, I will be able to advise the one in Australia. So if you go through, there are so many links that are able to advise you, but the average uh, salary will be approximately about 92000 per year. That's about 40, $47 per hour. But like Ron said the entry level position you always start very low it's about 75,000 per year but obviously when, once you gather the work experience and that you know when you move on good news you would be able to make up up to 120,000 per year but obviously that will take years of experience and also disclaimer this is before tax okay oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that applies oh, for, thanks for the reminder <laughs> Yes, of course. Yes, definitely. Hmm. Okay, so one last question from me for Anandi because I think Guryan already mentioned this. Mm. Um, so it's actually obvious that studying pharmacy will lead you to become a pharmacist. Um, studying vet science will allow you to become a vet. But you know what other options are there? So maybe Anandi, can you tell us more about um, other career options for pharmacy graduates? Yeah, this is pretty exciting because you know for most of the pharmacists they do you know there's a perception that they always end up in community pharmacies hospitals and other healthcare? but i got this very interesting uh story as uh, one of our alumni actually a pharmacist graduate her name is kathy Reed. uh she's an award-winning uh businesswoman entrepreneur that has uh basically she has played a very significant role in uh emerging uh digital health uh you know within the area uh, she's actually the co-founder of uh, Australia Epic Group. Uh, Epic Group is actually, uh, 
it's also a collaboration with uh, Epic Good Foundation. Uh, one of the uh, thing about uh, Kathy is that um, she actually kind of like involved a lot more with uh, cancer care, uh, say radi uh, radiation, as well as uh, slate head uh, chemotherapy, uh, whereby she has actually uh, invested a little bit more on the ICON group, which is the Australia's largest uh, dedicated uh, cancer care provider, and also have expanded uh, their footprint with uh, in Singapore, and also the radiation partnership in China. And she also have done an opening of an integrated uh, cancer center in New Zealand. So that's a very uh, success stories that we have uh, with one of our pharmacy students. So it's just not being a pharmacist. Like I said, she's an award-winning entrepreneur to, uh, yes, and we, hence we are very proud of her. Good to know it's good to know that you know you you're not just set on one career path your whole life mm -hmm. so thank you anabi and uh, Burian. i think i have no further questions but i'm sure students have some for you so maybe we can go on and look at some of them now mm -hmm. let's see so here we have um Okay, so we have a student asking what's the difference between pharmacy and pharmaceutical science uh, i think we already answered that one so uh, let's go on to the next one. Um, would a master's degree be sufficient to become a pharmacologist? And if so, what is the range of monetary remuneration you would expect? Uh, if they are referring to the fifth year, which I mentioned, the master of pharmacy, uh, which they do get a uh, paid uh, internship in that uh, particular year, uh, that particular year, and obviously, Australia labor law is pretty uh, well known, whereby there are uh, there are uh, you know wages that is being set within that one hour. So they will be getting paid uh, within that amount. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the next question I think is for Buyan. So uh, she's asking about animal science. So she's actually interested in causes that she will be able to interact with wildlife animals more. So she wants yeah. to know is you know is animal science better or will vet science be better? Yeah. So so of course we again we don't have animal science, but we do have wildlife science. Uh, so specifically to answer your 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 question, thanks for that. Um, if you if you find yourself interested in actually interacting with them, almost all of our programs that deal with animals give you that. OK, uh, whether that's a Bachelor of Science majoring in zoology or marine biology or entomology, the study of insects, uh, or if you're looking at a Bachelor of Wildlife Science or a Bachelor of Vet Tech or a Bachelor of Vet Science, all of them give you lots and lots of interaction with live animals. And if that's not good enough, you can go and visit the many, many sanctuaries and zoos that we have in the country. OK, and, 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 and there'll be plenty, plenty to look at. OK, so. Uh, but then you need to ask yourself the question, um, as much as it is nice to interact with live animals, uh, where do you see yourself uh, doing that as a career? Um, and then that might help you decide where you want to go to. If you want to actually uh, uh, treat and, and manage animal disease, then of course, uh, vet science might be for you. If you are more of a supporting role in the clinic, um, and you still get to do a lot of interaction with animals and assist their vets with, you know, uh, preparing prep for surgery, um, simple surgical procedure, in, including injections and, and nail clippings and all of that sort of thing. Uh, um, then maybe the Bachelor of Vet Tech is more suitable for you. Uh, if you want to move away from domesticated animals, whether they are pets or livestock and want to work with actual wildlife, um, uh, then maybe the Bachelor of Wildlife Science is more suitable for you. So you need to start um, maybe thinking about where you see yourself in a, a career and then work with one of the, the um, uh, uh, counselors um, to, to figure out the best plan for you. But all of our programs, if you see anything in the course profile that says animal, there's a very good chance you will be, be interacting with, with, with them. Thank you. Uh, our next question is for Ananti. So um, 
Alfred is asking, so how is pharmacy associated with the medicine course? So I think he's asking um how is pharmacy related to medicine? Uh, are they referring to our undergraduate medicine program? Yeah. Or uh, I think he may be, he may mean that um, you know how is uh, I mean how how does pharmacy relate to um medicine like um, because Okay, in Australia is a little bit different than uh, Malaysia, and I'm not sure about Singapore. Uh, basically, uh, a general practitioner, which is a doctor and pharmacist, they have two separate roles. So in Malaysia, I do understand when you see a general practitioner, they tend to prescribe you medication as well. But in Australia, it works differently. Like the prescription is given by the doctor and you tend to seek, uh, you know, uh, further information about uh, the medication and drugs with the pharmacies over, you know, most of the pharmacies are based at the probably at chemist warehouse or, you know, uh, some of the other location. So it's pretty uh, separate in terms of uh, if they would like to seek certain um, clarification on, you know, some of the drugs that they would like to uh, purchase on. So basically, I would say it's quite separate in terms of studying medicine and pharmacy. I hope that answers your student's question. Um, the next question is also for Ananti. So does pharmacy still have the research aspect or is it really just the pharmaceutical science that does research? If student then would like to, uh, obviously, you know, you need to study pharmacy in order to practice as a pharmacist. But there are opportunities for you to go into clinical research, you know, uh, further uh, upon completion of the degree. And uh, as you know, pharmaceutical science is purely on research. You are doing a lot of uh, drug discovery and also, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, drug development as well. So there are also opportunities to move on with the research eventually. Okay, I think we have one last question here. I believe actually Anandi has already answered this just now. So she just wants to confirm, I think, if she's not taking chemistry and biology as a subject, um, you, you will actually still have, uh, you know, other ways to get into the pharmacy degree, right? You don't really require biology. Chemistry is pretty crucial, like chemistry, maths, and English. These are the three subjects that is, uh, we need a pass in this three subject prereq. Hmm. Okay, um, we have no more questions here. So if everyone else has no more questions, We'll okay, let's just wait and see. Okay, I think we have no more questions. Okay, so um, for all our audience here, our counselors will follow up with you after this session. So please feel free to check with us if you have more questions. Please also let us know how we can improve our information sessions like this uh, through the survey after this event. So with that, uh, thank you so much to Ananti, uh, Guryan and Bernard for the insights this evening. And also to all of you students and parents who have taken the time to join us today. We hope you've gotten a much better understanding of the pharmacy program at Monash and vet science program at UQ. So one last thing I just want to say is that uh, we'll be having a final session of our Let's Talk Health Science session on medicine and dentistry on 29th of April, Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. So please feel free to register through the link that we will provide on the chat box here or on our website if you or someone you know is interested. So thank you again for your time and have a good night, everyone.